Welcome to this hand of me, Christian Schiller. Roughly every week, I take a look at a cool tool, project or practice that has caught my attention. This time I'm going to look at Virtual Body, which lets you create Mac OS virtual machines. This is primarily designed for testing future releases like application developers, for example, but maybe you have some other uses too, or just like me, you wanted to try a macOS beta for fun. If you enjoy what you see, please leave a comment, please leave a thumbs up, please say hi at the very least. And if you really enjoy what you see, then feel free to subscribe. And you can also find more about me at chrispichilla.com where you can find all my other work, my other videos, my blog posts, my podcast, my games, much, much more. There are other options for creating macOS virtual machines on a Mac. For example, Parallels is one, but without a lot of fiddling around, by default, Parallels will only install virtual machines of the current version of macOS, which makes sense. But we and I am interested in trying betas, so that doesn't work. Then I came across Virtual Buddy recently, and whilst it's very much still in experimental development with a few tweaks and a few prerequisites, it does actually work beautifully well. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. On GitHub, github.com slash inside GUI, as in graphical user interface, slash virtual buddy. There are no official releases, although you can download a typical disk image from the releases page and it updates uh, sort of once a month, roughly, at the moment. And actually the last release really fixed quite a lot of problems for me and added quite a lot of things to the interface. So it is worth keeping an eye on their updates and maybe subscribing to those on the GitHub repository. Now, first and foremost, it does mention this as a dependency for building, but it's also a dependency for running. And I recently discovered this um, because I upgraded to 12.5 and I had to redo this whole process to make Virtual Buddy work again. And you will need Xcode Beta 14. You can download that from developers.apple.com. You do need a developer's account, but I would assume many of you going down this path probably already have one of those. You download that, install it, let it install of its dependencies, and then you're good to go with Virtual Buddy. When that's done, you can download Virtual Buddy if you haven't done already drag it into your applications folder, open it up. The interface is pretty minimal. There's preferences that just determine where it saves all of the images, and this will get large quite quickly. It maintains downloads of the disk images and also of the virtual machines. Mac OS is not the, the slimmest of operating systems. It doesn't really need to be, I guess. So this can in theory mean for two virtual machines, you could end up having around 12 to 20 gigabytes of download and then 12 to 20 gigabytes of the virtual machine. So you have to do a little bit of tidying up um, to make sure that doesn't get out of control very, very quickly. That said, all you then need to do is click the big new VM button. And there are a couple of options here of how you can get the disk image that it needs to create the virtual machine. I haven't really experimented into great detail with these because for the most part, all I needed was the middle one, which downloads it from the official source of knowledge, which would be Apple itself. But you can, using the other options, use a virtual image you've already downloaded, or maybe you have custom ones. I honestly don't actually know how you'd create those, but if that sounds interesting to you, I'm sure you know better than me, and you will see those options that make sense to you. So for this purposes of this video, click the middle button. From there, you can then select the release you want to install. It offers all the current betas for the next version of Mac OS. Um, this video maybe will be around for a while, so I'm not going to mention which they are at the moment, but at time of recording, that is for Ventura, but also some older versions. Maybe you want to maintain several different virtual machines for testing older versions, current versions, so you don't mess up your current operating system, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever you find useful, it actually provides quite a lot of options there. Then the next step is you configure the virtual machine. This is something that was added in a recent version and you can see there's lots of settings for tweaking storage, uh, virtuals, but this is all virtual of course, virtual storage, virtual CPUs, 
uh, sharing between the host operating system, display, sound, all sorts of options there that you would expect to see in a virtual machine type application. With that done, you get to the download. This could take a little while, depending on your internet connection and how you're getting that image. Um, generally for me, it actually took less than 15 minutes to do the whole thing, so not terrible. So sit back and wait for that to finish. Once that's done, you should see a message, depending on the version of Virtual Body you're using, it might be slightly different. It takes you back to the screen with the list of virtual machines you have set up. Double click to open it up, and you'll also see here you can change the settings again from this screen. Also boot into safe mode. Um, to begin with, that's probably less important, especially as it's a new installation. I, think, I guess it's always safe mode from a new installation, but that could be useful in the future. And start up the machine. And this is where it might surprise you, and it surprised me because it's a new Mac, effectively. So you have to go through the whole installation process. This might be why you want to maintain some of those custom images that have already done all that. So you don't have to go through it again. When I first tried this, I kind of forgot that I had it running and the, the voice that sometimes starts announcing the interface to you when you install macOS started talking in the middle of a meeting. It was a little embarrassing. <laughs> but anyway, go through that process as much detail as you want to fill in. I just kept it very, very simple so I could get to the desktop and there you go a vanilla, nice and clean Mac OS beta up and running in your virtual machine with pretty minimal overhead, to be honest with you. One thing you'll notice when you first launch that machine, and you'll see it on my video too, is the resolution is kind of too hard to see what's going on. Uh, tools like Parallels often have settings to handle this. I don't know if Virtual Buddy does have a setting or will have a setting, but I actually found I just went into that new Ventura system settings dialog, changed it to a lower resolution and I could see what I was doing. And then you can now see that I'm running Ventura. I, I don't do a great deal with it in this video, but it was cool to see. I really wanted to try some of the features and now I have it installed. I can try some of them. And that's pretty much it with a little bit of pre setup and a lot of downloading. Virtual Buddy gives you the option of creating Mac OS virtual machines pretty quickly leveraging very native underpinnings of macOS to get very performant virtual machines. If that looks interesting to you, head over to the project, github.com slash insightgui slash virtualbuddy. And if you enjoyed this video, once again, please leave a comment, subscribe, or find more about me at kristenschiller.com. Thank you very much for joining.